Be sure to subscribe to the channel to get more news like this from TLDR. And the other TLDR channels are linked down below. So, you probably remember Andrew Yang from his failed presidential bid back in 2020, when he became famous for endorsing a universal basic income for all Americans. Last week, after 20 years as a registered Democrat, Yang left the Democratic Party to start his own new party, the Forward Party. So in this video, we're taking a look at Yang's new party, how it plans on fixing American politics, and whether it's better classified as a pressure group. So for those of you who don't know, Andrew Yang is an entrepreneur and politician who rose to fame in 2020 as a candidate in the Democratic Party presidential primaries. He was relatively unknown at the beginning of the process, but rose to prominence after endorsements from a range of celebrities known as the Yang Gang, including Elon Musk, Jack Dorsey and Donald Glover. Yang's signature policy was a universal basic income, or UBI, of $1,000 per month for all Americans, which he saw as necessary to replace the jobs lost out to automation. Yang dropped out shortly after the New Hampshire primary, but continued his career as a politician by running for New York mayor. Having started off as a frontrunner, Yang's campaign was, if we're being honest, pretty rubbish, and he ended up coming in fourth place. Anyway, Yang has apparently had enough of democratic politics and, last week, decided to leave the Democratic Party to start his own third party, the Forward Party. While the Forward Party does have some policies, which we'll get to at the end of this video, their main goal is around voting reform in the US. Specifically, the Forward Party want to make two changes to the way primaries run in America. They want to open up the primaries and to have ranked choice voting. Let's start with open primaries. For those of you who don't know, primaries are the preliminary mini-elections to select the candidates for the big election. For example, in the presidential primaries, the Democrats and Republicans have a long-winded primary process to decide who their presidential candidates are going to be. In 2020, Trump won the Republican primary, and Biden won the Democratic one. Now, most congressional primaries in the US are party-specific. Essentially, there's a Republican primary, and then there's a Democrat one. Unsurprisingly then, in most cases, the majority of primary members are party-affiliated. Democrats vote for the Democrat candidate, and Republicans vote for the Republican candidate. This means that the politicians are incentivized to play to their party base, because they need to win the primary for the opportunity to run for, let alone achieve, public office. This is part of the reason we end up with such polarizing candidates because if you let a whole load of Republicans vote for their candidate, you're going to end up with a candidate who's very popular among Republicans, but not necessarily popular with the wider electorate. And the same applies for the Democrats. Equally, it's also why US politicians rarely stray from the party line. They know that if they defy the party, even if whatever they're doing in defying their party is popular with the wider electorate, they're unlikely to win their next primary, so they'll probably lose their job. Yang's solution to this is to move to party-unspecific primaries. Essentially, instead of two separate primaries for each party, you'd have one primary, where all of the candidates competing against each other. The two candidates who won the most votes would then go through to the final round, where they compete in a runoff. According to Yang, this would mean that politicians wouldn't just be appealing to the 30% of party-affiliated voters. Instead, they'd be appealing to the whole electorate. Now, there's an obvious problem with this system as it stands. Imagine you have six Democrats running, but two Republicans. Each of the Democrats gets 10% of the vote, and the Republicans get 20% each. In a single vote system, the two Republicans would move on to the runoff election, guaranteeing a Republican representative, even though 60% of the electorate voted for a Democrat. This clearly isn't ideal, and Yang's solution to this is to implement a ranked choice voting system. Essentially, you'd rank your candidates in order of preference, and these preferences will be redistributed until one candidate reaches 50% threshold. Returning to our earlier imaginary example, imagine one Democrat got 5%, four got 10, and the most popular Democrat, who we'll call Joe, got 15%. Then let's also imagine that everyone who voted Democrat would prefer Joe to either of the Republican candidates. Neither of the Republicans got 50%, so you'd take the Democrats with the fewest votes, 5, and remove them from the race, redistributing their second preference votes. You'd keep doing this until Joe got over 50%, and then he'd fight in a runoff against one of the Republicans. 
In this situation, even though the Democrat vote was split, you'd still end up with a Democrat candidate to represent the 60% of people who prefer the Democrats to the Republicans. Another advantage to ranked choice voting is it lets you vote for minor candidates, because even if your minor candidate doesn't win, your vote would then get redistributed to one of your other preferred candidates anyway. There are some theoretical downsides to this solution though. Hypothetically, Democrats could tactically vote for weaker Republican candidates so that their candidate has a better chance in the runoff. In practice, there's little evidence this happens, because it's risky for two reasons. Firstly, ranked choice voting is difficult to rig, because preference redistribution is complicated. Secondly, there's always the chance that the weaker Republican ends up winning, in which case you have the worst possible situation for the Democrats. You can imagine the Democrats in 2016 tactically voting for Trump instead of Rubio, assuming he'd lose, only to be embarrassed when he wins. Regardless though, in practice, voters do seem to prefer the system that Yang is proposing. California and Washington implemented top two open primaries. California made the change in 2012, and the results have been pretty compelling. The number of races deemed to be competitive immediately doubled, and legislators became more responsive as a result. And the approval of California's legislature has now shot up from about 10% in 2010 to about 50% in 2016. So how does Yang expect to do this? Well, in 2020, Alaska moved to a top four ranked choice voting primary, which is basically the same system described earlier, except the top four candidates go through to the second round. And this happened via a ballot initiative known as Alaska Measure 2, because it turns out that a ballot initiative is enough to change the primary system in Alaska and 24 other states too. And it's exactly what Yang is planning to do. Yang's party does have some other policies too, including his trademark UBI, banning Congress people from working with lobbyists after their term, and universal health care. But given that you're unlikely to see a forward party president or congressional majority anytime soon, it's probably not going to be worth them going into too much detail there. In fact, plausibly the only real impact the forward party could have on elections is if they gift it to Republicans. You can imagine that if Yang ran as the forward party president in 2024, he could attract enough votes from otherwise Democrat voting people to swing the election towards the Republican candidate. This is why many Democrats don't seem all that keen on Yang's new party. For all its aspirations, the impact it's most likely to have is gifting the presidency to the Republicans. But what do you think? Could the forward party be a force for good and change the way primaries work in America to something a little more democratically representative? Or are they just Yang's personal project, prepped to sabotage the Democrats in 2024? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.